Hey, good evening, everybody. John Henderson Pierre here. Um, it's a Thursday night. Um, watching the Ravens and Steelers game, but a uh, good night to talk about another beer I want to talk about. It will put me to sleep, and that beer is Colt 45 Malt Liquor. Beer is all over the place throughout the United States. Started out based in Baltimore, Maryland, um, under the National Brewing Company, then G. Holland Brewing Company, and had so many ownership, but now it's under the Paps family of beers that they have. Uh, 5.6% uh, alcohol by volume. Some places consider it 6% ABV, but oh well. Anyhow. So I pour my beer. Again, to those who are wondering why I pour my beer this way, because I don't want to make a mess. And I'm trying to get as much of my beer as possible into my glass. This is a 16 ounce I bought at the store today. 16 ounce for a pint. Um, paid a dollar thirty-one, which is kind of high for that. Dollar thirty-one for that beer. But you know. But any enough on that topic. But um, again, introduced in 1963, um, this beer has been around for quite a while. Um, this beer has uh, sort of a during the whole malt liquor boom that happened back in the 60s. You know, you had Country Club at the time, which was one of the somewhat popular beers in the United States. Um, that was the only one, and then of course people wanting beer that had a little more strong strength and punch to it. Um, but this beer, this um, I mentioned about Country Club, you know that was back in the nineteen sixties. Uh, then of course Colt Forty Five came out. Then around that time also you had Schlitz. Which was also part of the Strohs Brewing Company. Um, and I'm saying Colt 45, but Schlitz was part of Stro was part of the Strohs Brewing Company. But people looking for a beer with a little more emphasis, a little more kick to it, strong beer. And again, if you look at the marketing, who they're trying to gear towards with more white, suburban, middle class folks. As we get into the 70s, they were still marketing to those to those individuals, but then slowly began to trickle down to the lower class or maybe to say the there were upper middle class then the middle class in the 50s 60s was the middle the upper middle class the guys playing golf whatever then to the middle class and then we get to the 70s middle class and then the sort of the low class lower class um, uh, Hispanics Af blacks Native Americans that began to advertise more of this beer to those to those individuals Um, there were a lot of commercials for this beer at the time, um, standard commercials. Now, now the name of the beer supposedly was under uh, the name of a football player. Of course, they're based in Baltimore. Named after a football player, um, Jerry Hill, who wore the number 45, played for the Baltimore Col Colts. Of course, before the Colts left in the middle of the night in 84 to Indianapolis and, and then... Then, of course, the Browns left and went to Baltimore, and then some other expansion team ended going into Cleveland. So, anyway, enough about football talk. And speaking of which, Baltimore, the team, the Ravens, you know, big sports town, love the Orioles, love their Colts, love the Bullets, the Baltimore Bullets before the Washington Bullets, and, of course, they love their football. So, you know, good, hardworking town. But anyway. Been there, visited many times. Good people. Um, crabs and all the love crabs, seafood. Anyway, um, but as we get into the name after, but again, the commercials, advertising, we all know who they were advertising towards. They were advertising towards the, um, reached out to everybody, the regular guy, you know, whatever. You had Ted Dance, I know one commercial with Ted Dance, another commercial with, uh, um, 
with uh, in that same commercial you had B Smith, you know, actors who started starting out, you know, you had you know, they were in a bar and enjoying Cold 45, but the commercial excuse me, that we're all synonymous and famous with, of course, is Mr. The Lover Man, the hunk, the Denzel Washington, uh, the Denzel Washington of his time, and that is, of course, Billy D. Williams. Um, of course, he became very familiar and sort of the face of the of the beer, and um, you know, why not? He was a good-looking man, you know. He can sell anything, and of course, people bought bought into his bought into his uh, bought into his. Uh, Bought into the the, the 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 niche, if you will, the hook, line, and sinker of what Colt Forty Five was all about. You know, hey, it works every time. You know, there'll be a scenario where he was going on a date or maybe getting ready to have some lady friend come over, and then you know, pop the Colt Forty Five. You know, chilled on, on ice or it was in the refrigerator, and then they will all sit and watch movies. And you know, what's about to go down. Colt Forty Five works every time. Um, so that became his signature, and then of course the beer, the sales skyrocketed because of that, you know. Um, and uh, of course the beer became synonymous. He was, you know, people criticized him, knocked him down for for saying, for doing these commercials because it was, of course, the beer was not really was promoting a negative image of black folks and you know particularly minorities. We're drinking this as we get into the 90s, you know, 70s and 80s. The commercials were everywhere. Sales were doing great. So we get into the 90s, you know, um, malt liquor was beginning to get a negative rap. Films like Boys in the Hood and whatnot were saying, oh, this is trash. It's killing our, our young men and women. It's poison, you know, yada, yada, yada. You know, how dare you sell this beer? So so that was the image of... Uh, of, of malt liquors, particularly beers like this. So then Snoop took over, Snoop Dogg, the rapper, got involved and began to do commercials of, of uh, Colt 45. And um, my soon-to-be mother-in-law, she drank this, as a lot of her friends drank this. Now, at the time, here in the state of Alabama and maybe some other states where alcohol laws are just absurd, um, here in the state of Alabama, you couldn't sell liquor or beer that was, I mean, beer that was 6% or above. Everything had to be under 6% or less. And of course, all that changed in 2009 when they, they the state passed a law where now they can sell beer that was uh, at all levels from 6% and more, besides just 6% and under in terms of alcohol by volume. So at that time, Steel Reserve came on the scene. Um, he had Hurricane by um, Steel Reserve by um, Miller Brewing Company, of course, Hurricane, uh, which was a, a response to, by the way, of, of Steel Reserve, 8.1%. That came on the scene. Um, Colt 45 was kind of always in between in that somewhere in the middle. So, again, as I mentioned, the web, as I mentioned earlier, you know, some sites, have, some places have it at 5.6%, others have it at 6% ABV by volume. I'll just go with the 6%. So, standard malt liquor smell to it. Corn syrup. Going out very easy right now. I had this in the freezer for about an hour. Completely forgot about it. Took it out and put it in the refrigerator and kind of let it get adjusted. But you know, yeah, it's a pretty pretty solid. And this is going to put me to sleep very good tonight. Um, I've had a pretty good day today. <laughs> um, so, um. You know, again, it's a legacy beer. It's a very smooth beer. Uh, very, very easy, very easy to go down. Now, you know, this beer I can. I, I've I've I bought a lot. 
Um, then, of course, there are other brands they have. They have the uh, Double Malt and another beer, which I've also tried of theirs. I never tried the Double Malt, but I have tried the High Gravity, which will 8.5% will really put you on your, you know what, keister. Very strong. And any beer, <clears throat> again, a lot of carbonation with this one, but any beer, 8% or more, you know, ABV. Please freeze it and make sure that you're, if you're going to be drinking, make sure that's the only beer you'll set, you'll have, and then that's it, nothing else. And if you're going to be ha handling that all night, make sure that you're going to be home most of the day, and you're not doing anything else. You're going to be sitting down pounding hurricanes and um, pounding Colt Steel Reserves or any or Old, old English High Gravities. Uh, make sure those are the only beer that you're you're savoring. And, and, and that's pretty much it because, you know, those will run you down. You don't want to operate a car. You don't want to handle any power tools or try to do any mechanical work because it, you'll be a bit loopy afterwards. But with this one here, 6% or 5.6% or 6. or 6.0%, whatever, the ABV of this beer, um, it was not bad. You can pound a few of these, maybe two or three or four. You'll be okay, but um, I got nothing against Cold 45. I don't get this often. I, I mean, I get it a lot here, but I don't really go run to and say, hey, I need to buy this all every and every week, every day beer. Of the malt, or excuse me, I should say, and I'm not going to be calling it, but of high gravity beers, um, the Mickey's is a little smoother. Um, King Cobra, about in that same, is a little, I think a little bit smoother as well. Nothing against those. You know, I, I would say I get Mickey's more a lot than I would King. Now, King Cobra does not, doesn't doesn't sell here in, in the state of Alabama. Maybe in other places in Alabama, but we don't get it here in our area in the Mobile, Baldwin County area. So we have to really, well, I have to at times, if I'm wanting to sample that beer, I would make a trip down on I-10 and on 65, I-65 onto I-10 to Mississippi, which is about 25, 30 minutes away from where I live here, and to get the uh, and, and to, to get the beer. And um, um, that, that'd be a bit of a trip, but um, 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 but that's not a trip. I mean, so like I said, just right around the corner. But I really actually wanted to kind of get pack you know do a little bit of a shopping getting some things some goods for me for sampling over the weekend i'll probably do that i may end up doing that this weekend not sure uh kind of 60 40 right now on, on traveling to mississippi um i have a little issue with my ride right now it needs to get repaired um my car um is a little bit of a fender bender but anyway um It's a good beer. It's, uh, you know, Cold 45 is a good beer. Like I said, it's like like my colleague John Sharon talks about. It's one of them legacy beers that you enjoy and sample right now because before you know it, it may be gone. You know, it's, it's one of them historical, you know, beers that we, we all grew up with. My dad knows about it. He's 67. As is my mom, she's 60. You know, they know about Colt 45. Uh, everyone knows about it. This beer is sold everywhere. Size, six packs, 12 packs, 18 packs, 30 packs, wherever you name it across the country, it's everywhere. Um, again, 5.6% or 6.1% is pretty easy to smooth to go down. Um, yeah, um, what I was talking about was about maybe going to Mississippi and OE. Old English was about the same movie as this one, but I think to me that tastes a little bit better than a little bit more crisp than 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 Cold Forty Five. I could be crazy to say that, but you know, Cold Forty Five, I like it. But again, I don't get this regularly. Um, um, I think King Cobra of all of them of that of that range, and then Mickey's. I would say those are the two that I really would would try more often. Um, 
but um, but uh, I, I love OE high gravity. I think it's excellent. Hurricane is good. Um, I'm not sure about King Cobra. I think that's also good. You know, King King Cobra. Is, is, okay, OE high gravity. OE OE um, KC. Those are probably my my favorite. Hurricane I like a lot. Like those probably are really are probably the more smoother malts that are out there. So anyhow, I'm going 15 minutes so way longer than most of my videos. But anyway, um, my rating for this beer on a one to ten scale, I'm giving this a eight for Cold 45. Um, I, I I like the beer. It's not an everyday beer for me. So, um, tell me your thoughts, leave your comments, what you feel about it, and we'll go from there. So, anyhow, John Anderson Pierre, the Beer TV Ramble. I'm going to do a ramble hopefully someday soon about television. Of course, the TV season has, has begun and what's going on, and I'm trying to give you my thoughts and things going on. But, like I said, this is. I may do a 30 minute video this weekend or maybe a 45 minute give my thoughts on everything that's going on on TV and let you decide what, what your feelings about it. Um, sort of a wrap of the first couple of weeks and just the whole TV season, an hour, sort of a little synopsis, summary of what's been going on. Anyhow, Bear TV Ramble, Sean Anderson, Bear, tell you to keep watching and cheers.